Hello and welcome to the preparation for the technical phone screen on the iOS track at LinkedIn. My name is Max Swain and I am an iOS developer on the flagship app. So what can you expect when you have a phone interview? First, you will need a phone and a computer with internet access. And then it's important to note that the interview will be one hour long. First five minutes will be introductions, so you get to introduce yourself and the interviewers will do the same. After that, there will be so-called mobile quick hitters, which are questions that are language specific and you get to choose either Swift or Objective-C. And there will be questions also about uh, Apple SDKs like UIKit, Grand Central Dispatch and Automatic Reference Point, for example. Then the main part will be a 45 minute block of coding and algorithm questions. We will ask two questions and I will go into more detail in the next slide. At last, you will have five minutes to ask questions to the interviewers. Okay, let's talk about the coding and algorithm questions a little bit. We will use CodaPad for those, but we will have the compile feature disabled. So it's more like a real whiteboard interview where you can write code, but you're not asked to compile and actually run it. Now you get to choose the language that you want. There's no restrictions on that. And then the interview will actually contain of two questions. The first one will be a 10 minute so-called smoke test question, which is really only to show that you can do basic coding. The algorithm will be very straightforward. My recommendation is uh, don't spend too much time on this, just go through it quickly and don't overthink it. If you are applying for a staff position or higher, you will instead have uh, more background questions rather than a small test coding interview. And then there will be a 30 minute block of an advanced question, which we will solve one example together. Later. Then there is five minutes buffer just in case you need a little bit more time either for the first or the second question. So now let's solve the advanced challenge together. So we have a CodaPad window here. And as mentioned before, you get to choose a language. In this case, I prefer Swift over Python. And we already have some code here that code had just gives us. Now the interviewer at this point will copy and paste a question for you. And let's take a quick look at this together. So the question is, given a sorted array, where a function that determines if a given number is present in the array or not. And then there will usually also be a short example for you to better understand the problem. So here we have an input array that contains numbers 2, 5, 6, 9, and 23. And the first call is find 9, in which we would say, yes, 9 is part of the array. And the second one is find 4, which would return false. Now, there are four or five important steps here to solve a coding problem. The first one is to understand the problem. Then the second one is to, this is a recommendation that you don't have to do this. If you feel confident, you can skip it, but in general, candidates do better if they do it. Uh, find a simple solution. Good optimize the solution. And then fourth is implementation. And then at the end, since you're not compiling and running the code, make sure you test it. So you manually walk through the code, make sure it works. Now, what can we do to better understand the problem? It is a good idea to ask a lot of questions and come up with your own examples. So one question could be, what is expected from the algorithm? Is it expected to give us the 
index of the element. So let's say if you say find nine, I'll be expected to say the return zero, one, two, three. Or is the algorithm just supposed to say yes, it is in there, or no, it is not? And let's say the interviewer says it's okay to just say true or false. So you don't, you're not interested in where, you just want to know if it is in there. Now it helps to come up with your own examples. Oftentimes it makes sense to come up with some edge cases also, like what is with an empty array. That is especially good in step five when it comes to testing. You also want to feed your algorithms some edge cases. And just some more um, areas that may have values that are of different kind than what you see in the example, like negative values, for example. Um, sorry, that would not work, for example. This would not be sorted. And then it also is a good idea to come up with an area that is a bit bigger to just understand a little bit more about how would you make it scale? Like how would this solution look like if, a, if an area was a little bit bigger? How would you manually go find a solution? So, ten, uh, so, now we have a few ideas, a few examples, and this will help us to find a simple solution. A simple solution that probably comes to mind quickly is to just go through the area from the left to the right. And as soon as we find an index and an element that equals the number that we're looking for, then we say yes. And if it is, um, if you cannot find it, then we say no. So in this case, in the solution, walk through area from left to right, compare each element number with number on through that's false. And you know, just writing in pseudocode here, that's at this point, no need to write real code, it would just be a waste of time. Again, second step. It's a recommendation. I think it helps. It doesn't take much time. You now know you can solve the problem. You may not know if it's the best solution yet, but it may also calm you a little bit, make you less nervous. Um, important here is to discuss with the interviewer what is the runtime complexity. In this case, it's O of N because in worst case, the element is not in the area. So we have to walk through from the left to the right and so basically you have to do any steps to find out it's not in there. In order to find an optimized solution, it helps to go through your examples again. So for example, if you were to look at area C here and just say find five, you walk through it, you start left and you see that is a gap between four and 10. So five is not there you would automatically see an optimization here that it's pointless to walk even further than that. So using the property of the area that it is sorted helps us to come up with a better solution. So here, this is a common divide and conquer approach that would help, which is called, in this case, um, binary search. And we're still looking at a high level pseudocode solution here before we start implementing it. So binary search works and following you basically cut the area in half with each step. Basically the area that you're looking at. And this works by finding the midpoint and check if element at midpoint equals none. If it does, then you're done. You know that the element is, has been found. So we return true. If not, then 
we know there's only two options here. The element can either be bigger than number, smaller than number. So if the element is smaller than number, if array midpoint smaller than number, then we know we only have to look at the right half because say numbers um, so we cut in half let's start with a smaller um, example here to work through this quickly so we know that midpoint is six here let's say we say find nine then we look at the six bigger than nine Yes, yeah, so in this case, uh, sorry, six is smaller than nine. So in this case, we only look at the right side of the error. Then the other option is that number is smaller than area midpoint. And that means we would only look at the left side of the error. So now we have a high level solution in pseudocode. It's time to implement it. The code that Codepad gave us here is not particularly useful. So we will just place it in write on function here. It's called a binary search with parameter number and array, which is an int array here in this case. And we return a Boolean value as we had discussed with the interviewer that this is our interface. Now what we have to do is first initialize some variables. And we want to walk through this area as we just did in our head with a loop. So as long as start index is small or equal end index, we keep in that loop, we keep running this loop. So inside this loop, what we're going to do is write the logic that we had here to find the element. What we know is if we don't find it, we want to return false. It means as soon as we leave the loop, we want to return false. So our first step here is to find a midpoint and check if the element at midpoint is equal number. So midpoint is start index, the index, sorry, I had the wrong key here. So the average between those two numbers. And now we can check if array at midpoint equals number, then sure. Else if array at midpoint was smaller than number, we said we will only look at the right side of the array, which means in this case, we have to change the start point. And start point equals midpoint. And to a small optimization here, and we can even ignore midpoint now. We can go one step further because we've already checked if the element is at midpoint and decided it is not. And then in the last case, we know that area midpoint is bigger than number, which means we are only looking at the left portion of the area. So we change endpoint equals midpoint minus one. All right. So this is the algorithm. And now step five is important to test your solution. So it's a good idea to use a example that is not too big and not too small. So let's just use the one that the interviewer gave you. So let's say this is array, and let's say we want to find nine here. 
So first we start here the start index is zero and index is we got one, two, three, four, five elements. That means end index is four. So start index is one, end index in this case. Midpoint in this case would be two. And area at index two would give us six. And the question is, is six the same as nine? No. So we are, do not go in here. Is six smaller than nine? Yes. So we go in here, which means we will change start point to midpoint plus one. So midpoint is two, midpoint plus one is three. So now our start index is three. Let's work through the loop again with the new values and see what happens. Now we calculate a new midpoint here which would be three plus four is seven divided by two, run it down is three. Now, this area at element three, index three, nine, is that the same as nine? In this case, yes, this is the case. So we end up here, return true, and are done with this example. I would recommend to find examples that make you walk in each branch. So make sure that you also end up in this branch here, to find any issues there, and certainly find an example that returns a different um, end result. So for example, you would say find minus one here and then see what happens. And maybe go back to your examples and see what edge case scenarios you also had. In this case, an empty array would also be good to test. All right. Thank you for watching. This was the TPS preparation, and good luck with your interview.